I'm Gerald Kupchik, author of the book, The Aesthetics of Emotion, Up the Down Staircase of the Mind-Body. The main premise behind the book is the relations between the mind and the body in everyday life are analogous to relations between subject matter and style in art and other aesthetic forms. Consider the following. In highly representational artworks, the function of the style is to simply help us read the scene, identify the subject matter. It does not obtrude. It simply provides what we call affordances, information. Similarly, in everyday life, the function of the bodily process is to provide energy that helps us focus on the challenge at hand or to fulfill our goals. It too does not obtrude. On the other hand, in more Impressionist or Expressionist paintings. The style provides an atmosphere, a background, out of which the narrative, the subject matter, emerges. It gives it a flavor, in a sense metaphorical. We're not aware of it. It shapes our overall experience. In a similar manner, when we are in emotionally loaded situations that are meaningful to us, it reawakens memories from our past and these memories and the bodily reactions that are attended to them shape the structure of our experience below the threshold of awareness. Time can speed up or slow down. Space can open up or close in. We can be more or less aware of sensation and connection or disconnection from others. In essence, the background bodily experience shapes the meaning of the emotional moment. There are other ways in which aesthetics can help us understand emotions and feelings in everyday lives. The artist, for example, has to balance the thinking eye, E-Y-E, with the being eye, capital I. The thinking eye is adaptive. It's top-down. It addresses matters of technique. The being eye is spontaneous and bottom-up. It addresses matters of personal meaning without the person, the artist, necessarily being aware of it. They must balance the two. Viewers, consumers of media products, face a similar kind of decision. Like the thinking eye, they can make willful decisions to watch one kind of program versus another kind of program because it'll give them a jolt of energy or make them feel a little bit of emotional warmth or detachment. They do it willfully. On the other hand, People can choose artworks, become attached to certain programs, certain characters that resonate with personally loaded meanings of which they may be unaware. Even when we go back into the very history of art and look at cave paintings, we can also find the roots of current emotional realities. What do I mean? We're very impressed by the paintings that are found on the walls of caves 30,000 years ago. But these paintings could not exist unless there was an audience that could appreciate them, that could be moved by them. And I propose in the book that to be moved by art means to be moved by others. The landscape of emotion has been changed 30,000 years ago to enable us to be empathic and to be aware of the emotional realities of others. So emotion and art are intimately bound from the origins of art itself to our everyday life today. Thank you very much.